So let's talk about the actual things that hit the ground now, the media rights. Uh, and by the way, if you want to find this information in your textbook, we're back in Chapter 15 now. Uh, so this is Chapter 1, 5 or 15. So we are, are looking at meteorites and impacts uh, and how they, impact, uh, how they interact with Earth. The vast majority of the meteorites are what we call stony meteorites. These are basically just chunks of rock. Iron meteorites, uh, about 4 or 5% of the rocks are what we call iron meteorites. And an iron meteorite is, as the name implies, mostly iron. And then there's this 1% of rocks that are a combination thereof. Okay, now, where do these things come from? Basic idea that we have is that we've got an asteroid that's differentiated. Heavy stuff is sank to the middle, so we have an iron core. We have a rocky exterior, and in the area between the core and the mantle, we have a mixture of rock and iron. And so if another object you know, comes out here and slams into that and smashes into it, then what happens is it breaks apart this asteroid into all these little pieces, and the pieces go flying everywhere. The pieces that used to be part of the crust of the mantle give rise to the stony meteorites. The pieces that used to be part of the core give rise to the iron meteorites. And the ones that are near the core mantle boundary give us the stony irons. And so this is our kind of understanding of where these things may be coming from. How do you find meteorites? Well, it's rock, basically. Most of the things people find that they think are just weird-looking rocks are just weird-looking rocks. Or they find a chunk of iron, it's usually a piece of slag or something. Uh, again, it can be a, a geological formation or man-made. Um, actual meteorites are very, very rare. Uh, um, they, they, they can differentiate them somewhat. There's a whole way of telling a meteorite from what in physics we call a meteor wrong, you know, which is these rocks people find. There's odd rocks, and they just all they are odd rocks. They're actually earth rocks. They're just weird. Um, one of the things though that they have found a lot of meteorites is in the polar regions, you know, because you get all this ice all over the place, and so if you find a rock sitting on top of the ice, there's only one direction it could have come from, and that's up. And so a lot of meteorites are actually found, uh, found you know, in the polar region. I knew somebody once who actually uh, spent a couple months in Antarctica going across the ice looking at rocks, you know, looking for meteorites, and found several. So, so that's one place. But you know, for the, as far as the rest of us, you know, you're walking through the desert or the forest or whatever, and there's a weird rock. You normally just step over it because that's really all it is is a weird rock. The iron meteorites, they are these interesting sort of things. They, they, they typically are uh, these chunks, the very dense chunks of metal. They often have these little scoop marks in them, uh, uh, these little scoop marks that look uh, uh, like someone took a spoon and just kind of tried to dig out of them. Okay, um, they're typically, they, they typically don't have holes in them. They are pretty solid. They don't have holes. They don't have, uh, they're not spongy looking or something. Uh, someone brought a rock uh, from the summer, actually, and, 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 uh, and routinely someone asked, asked, I think I found a meteorite, and almost always it's not. It's a piece of slag or some kind of geological formation, uh, iron ore or something. Uh, but it's generally not a meteorite because uh, the meteorites, you know, typically would have specific sort of patterns. Uh, and so uh, generally what I can do is I can tell if, if, if it's definitely not a meteorite or if it's maybe. If it's a maybe, I can pass that on. Uh, about a two-third or three-fourths of the iron meteorites actually have, if you slice them open and etch them with acid, have this weird crisscrossing pattern in there. Uh, called Wittmannstanten patterns. Wittmannstanten patterns are caused when the iron cools very slowly, very slowly, without being influenced by strong gravitational field or magnetic field. And the iron crystals interlock in this pattern. This is a dead giveaway 
if you slice open an iron meteorite and it has these patterns on the inside, that it is in fact a meteorite and not an earth rock. This is not something that you can reproduce in the laboratory. So this, this is uh, an ironclad, excuse the pun, evidence that it's extraterrestrial in origin. You have to have very slow cooling, much slower than is reasonable to do in the laboratory. Uh, so you cannot get these crystals to grow like this, you know, within human time spans, you know, that are, that are reasonable. And so uh, th this, this, this is something that's only in meteorites. Stony iron meteorites are a mixture of rock and iron. And typically you'll have iron pieces in here and then some piece of rock. And, and often the rock itself is highly crystallized rock. Uh, so uh, you'll have something that's, that's uh, got some very large crystals of something. Uh, uh, for example, you can have olivine crystals or so forth like in this rock right here. And so we've got some examples of these kind of rocks on campus in which you've got iron with mixed olivine in it. Um, uh, the one rock, the sample we have on campus is really looks more like a big chunk of iron with mixed olivine. I've seen some that are more like olivine with chunks of iron in them or, or this hodgepodge like in this picture right here. So the stony iron meteorites are probably the borderline between mantle and core and then the stony meteorites. Now even the stony meteorites, almost all of them have little flakes of elemental iron in them. Iron is an end byproduct of nuclear fusion, a nuclear fusion inside of stars. So it's actually fairly common in the inner star medium. Um, as, as these rocks all come together in space, then you end up with these little flakes in here. Uh, the, the asteroids are not, do not grow as big as the Earth. They do not have enough gravity to completely differentiate so that all the iron sinks in the middle. And so you end up with these things like this. Now, often these stony meteorites, when they come through the atmosphere, the outer edge heats up and boils away. And so you have the outer part is kind of a blackened, partially molten sort of thing. Again, this is characteristic of meteorites and, and what they look like. A few of them look like conglomerates like this. Uh, that would be an example of like sort of the crust of an asteroid. Okay. And I've already talked about chondrites. These chondrites form in the propylate itself. And, and they're technically stony meteorites, but they form by a different process. They're, they form in the propylate itself. And those chondrules actually are among the first things that form in the solar system. And then they stick together and they make the chondrites. Carbonaceous chondrites, uh, they still have these little nodules of, of things in them, but they're very, very rich in carbon almost certainly a carbonaceous chondrite forms in the outermost part of the solar system where you have ammonia, methane, and other sort of things that can help make up the uh, uh, object. Uh, carbonaceous chondrites, you know, may f be what you get when you have a dead comet. It would give you something that would be like an asteroid made of things like this. Meteorites come in all shapes and all sizes and uh, the little teeny tiny things up to great big giant ones.